so you have decided on why you're going to be raising crickets what you're doing in the whole cricket farming world um, you've chosen a breed you have figured out possibly what space you're going to use so now what what i would do now again always and and i will forever repeat this and i know there's a lot of people that would disagree with me but whatever your smallest space that you can start in that makes you comfortable um, and feels like you are actually going to get your feet wet in this is what i recommend as small and as cheap as possible for the first at least six months so as you start to think about that space the very biggest rocks that you need to turn over are what I will cover in this video. Now, when I speak on this, I am speaking sheerly from the success of hatching crickets, raising crickets, having crickets to harvest. I am not speaking about the business side at all. That is an entirely different endeavor um, that if you don't figure out this basic part of hatching, rearing, harvesting, your business plan doesn't matter. So with that in mind, your biggest rock, massive boulder, huge, you have to move it, you have to set it where you want, is your environment. The ability to control your environment is the single biggest challenge you will have as a cricket farmer. It impacts everything else. If you don't think about it from the beginning, if you don't get it right from the beginning, or as close to right as we can all get it, you will not be successful at hatching, rearing, harvesting in an efficient manner. You may be able to hatch really well, your mortality rates are gonna be horrendous. You may be able to hatch and rear, but something goes wrong between then and harvest. Your environment, I cannot stress enough, is the most important rock that you can mess with. Forget the feed, Forget the water, although those are both part of the environment. Um, environment and the ability to control it is the biggest boulder. So what do I mean when I say environment? Um, yes, like I said, feed and water does play into it, but feed and water are not necessarily what, I, what I'm talking about when I say environment. When I say environment, I mean temperature, humidity, and airflow. Those three are your biggest friend or your biggest enemy. They all matter. They all also vary depending on the breed that you're raising. So again, if I ever, or if I in this video give you guidelines of things um, about thresholds of where I have experienced problems, on any of those three. Um, it's coming from me raising the common house cricket in the middle of central Iowa. That may not be the same for you, depending on where you're at. You might be in a colder climate, you might be in a warmer climate, you might be in um, a more humid climate, a drier climate, you might be raising a different breed. So please, please do your own experimenting with this, but I will share um, the ideal ranges as I see them, as I've seen them, over the last two and a half years for you to then be able to kind of figure out within the ballpark of where you probably need to be. So the first one, um, probably the easiest, honestly, is temperature. Temperature for Ikeda, um, there's a couple different variables. One of them is how long do you want the life cycle to be? Um, if you want it to be longer, then you want to be at the lower end of the range. And if you want it to be a shorter life cycle for whatever reason, you want it at the higher end of the range. So where I've seen the most success for common house cricket, and trust me, I have gone past both ends of these ranges and tried it out and, and it doesn't work. And maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm a bad cricket farmer. Very well could be. Um, so the low end i i don't like to go lower than 86 degrees fahrenheit and the high end i do not under any circumstances 
allow my facility to get over 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I think there's probably a few degrees of wiggle room up and down on both of those. But in my experience, um, it just, you're flirting with problems if you get too much past either of those. Um, and I should uh, also emphasize the fact that that is for the actual grow out of the crickets. Um, for the incubation, it needs to be a little more towards the high end. I've seen optimal hatching levels at about 90 degrees. Um, whatever you do, don't try to hatch them at 80 degrees. It won't work very well. But I never would have known that if I didn't try it. So uh, ideal temperature range, in my opinion, for common house cricket is between 86 and 92 degrees. So the second big piece of environment um, that I have not done as great of a job of manipulating and monitoring and tracking um, each round to have as good of a gut feeling about is humidity. So for, I know that this definitely varies by breed in terms of what their tolerances are and what they prefer. Um, so again, in speaking from uh, the grow out of common house cricket, generally speaking, optimal level of humidity that I like to maintain my facility at is between 40 and 45 percent humidity. Now, in the middle of the summer in Iowa, it gets very humid. Very, very humid, like oppressively so. Um, so rather than fight that, I let it bump up a little more, but I never let it get over 55 or 60 percent. Um, after that, you start to have problems with condensation, you start to have problems with um, housing absorbing too much moisture from the air and starting to collapse. So for me, the optimal level for growing the crickets out is uh, 40 to 45% if it's possible. Um, the pitfall of when you get let the humidity get too high, assuming that you have any sort of dead air, which quite frankly in a cricket farm with housing and all of that, you're going to have some dead air somewhere. Um, a higher humidity level, the amount of ammonia that the crickets put off, when that ammonia gas combines with moisture, it creates a sinking gas essentially that will kill everything. Um, again, I know that because I've done it too many times. So keep an eye on your humidity. Consider that while you are, are doing a build out. Oh, I suppose I should say as well. Um, incubation again is different, so you, I would run that more at 80%. Um, I control mine in a microclimate, and by a microclimate I just put a lid on a bin and make it more humid. Um, so you want the incubation warmer and you also want it more humid. And the final piece, um, third leg of the stool if you want to look at it that way and if any of the three legs are gone the stool falls over is airflow. So while crickets are not like other mass reared livestock pigs, chickens, things that you think of in mass confinements um, in that they don't need as much fresh air as those would to stay healthy because they're, I mean, they just don't. Uh, they do things on a smaller scale, is my super scientific way of saying that. Um, they do need fresh air. The fresher the air you can provide them, the movement of air, to an extent, obviously you don't want like a high powered fan over every single bin that you have, but that's not gonna make them very happy either. But you do need to have some sort of airflow through your entire facility. Um, as I start to talk about housing and that kind of stuff, I'll get into some of the pitfalls that you might have where you're trying to increase your surface area, uh, but you are actually killing your crickets because you're cutting the airflow. Um, airflow matters more than I ever thought at the beginning. Um, and even when I designed my new facility, I didn't take it into account as, as much as I should have. 
Um, so learn from my mistakes and think about airflow. So if you're in a colder climate, I realize that's gonna be tough in the winter because you're essentially bringing in cold air um, and throwing out the heat that you have. Uh, but if there's an efficient way to do that, figure out the maximum amount that you can do it. Um, because airflow really, really matters for the health of your crickets. So like I said, I am no expert, um, but those are the three big rocks that if I were to start over and do it again, those are the three that I would absolutely focus on and try to maximize as much as I could, or at least maximize the thought that went into it um, before I got my first crickets. Uh, again, your ability to control your environment and doing that right from the beginning will pay off for you tenfold um, rather than you just trying to get as big as you can as fast as you can focus more on being able to control your environment and you will have better success over time at raising your crickets your crickets will be happier you will be happier everyone's happier so if you think I missed anything if, if you think I'm totally full of it all of the above are totally fine um, Drop a comment, let me know. Uh, would love to hear what you've seen success in terms of range, ranges for um, temperature, humidity, those kind of things. Um, and if you have some sort of novel way to uh, control airflow and do all of that, totally open to a collaboration there. Anyway, thanks for watching.